I did two separate things. One is uh, I got Web3 linking using IPFS. And uh, another one is crossing bridge, uh, looking into uh, crossing bridge use cases with FDM. Uh, so for the first one, the Web3 linking one, uh, the kind of problem that I identified is that I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of DAOs and I'm in a lot of different DAOs. And what I realized is that, for example, like Bangladesh, Gitcoin, people are mostly using um, Discord to or organize, organize things and people don't know who are the, the other person because they are mostly anonymous. And in that case, it create a trust problem of like, how can I trust that I can work with you on this thing? Because I don't know what your skills are. And also, I don't know what your interests are as well. So it's hard for those DAOs coordinators to actually help them grow or assign them the right task uh, to do it. So to, to tackle that is actually a pretty complicated process today where DAOs will actually like start with very simple tasks to ramp them up. And then once they prove their skills and then they will like gradually ramp them up to like larger tasks. So it's like a lot of back and forth, a lot of menu process. So what I found, I feel missing uh, in Web3 DAO space right now is that there's like this uh, Pope service. I don't know if you're uh, familiar, it's called Proof of Attendance. So say you go to East Denver, you get these NFTs badges for you. Um, and there's also another kind of service like a rabbit hole where you do some trainings like build space or rabbit hole training or DeFi. They give you another NFT badges that, hey, you did this training, but none of them really ties to your actual work that is being done which I think is personally is the most important thing. So what I'm thinking is that I like, can we solve this problem with like kind of like building a Web3 linking sort of thing where linking requires your real identity, but in this case, like we can keep you stay anonymous, but still try to figure out what, what you're actually capable of doing based on your password. So I call it proof of work, your actual password work. And basically the idea is to turn your wallet into a Web3 uh, work portfolio. And I also think that uh, this will be useful to IPFS uh, usage as well, because Today, like there's what, like 1.4 million users in DAOs now, and uh, a couple million of them actually use, uh, actually do the voting and things like that. So there's a lot of activities on chain, and we can help them create these portfolios, and all of them use IPFS to uh, to use NFTs and to index this information. Then I think we can also drive the use case for IPFS a lot as well. So I did a quick demo on this, and um, yeah, I connected my wallet, and then the idea is that now like it's kind of like a manual step. So uh, this uh, this ID is uh, a test ID. Basically, it's from Bankless Dogs. Uh, they have a guild, so this is their uh, guild that uh, kind of do pay out for engineering tasks. So now I can connect uh, connect to this and get my proof. And when I do that, it basically triggers a query to blockchain using Alchemy to see like what is the payment from this uh, bankless DAO to this specific wallet. And that payment is kind of like a proof of work of like my contribution to bankless. So uh, what we could do is that user can manually enter information of like, hey, this is uh, like web app uh, building and, and I can name the NFT as like build something like that, just a quick example. Then I can mean it. And right now it's on testnet, but uh, the concept is that Uh, so once you mint it, you can basically see it. Uh, we can deploy it to Polygon and then you can see it in your uh, MetaMask wallet. And the concept is that once we do that, then we can have a real public page, which uh, is yet to be implemented, where you can basically see like similar to pop page, but all the NFTs there are actually generated from your past contributions to those DAOs. And then now what you can do is that we can have a link for your work portfolio and then you can add it to your Discord, you can add it to your Twitter, you can basically bring it to wherever you go. Uh, when Even when you work at different DAOs, like you can showcase that, hey, I did this engineering work and this is my proof. And uh, and that's how uh, I think can help them facilitate the coordination uh, and help them kind of help DAOs uh, scale better as well. That is uh, that is what, it's basically like a project that we did, uh, me and my, one of my teammates did at East Denver, and we're still continuing working on that. And we hope to kind of use that to drive use case for IPFS as well. Um, so that's first. And then the other one is uh, I'm pretty interested in FBM. So I was like looking into FBM uh, with Raul. And right now we're in M1 stage, which is FBM is like non-programmable at the moment. And then uh, the next stage, we want to make it programmable. Essentially, we need to figure out what are the use cases, what are the things that we can build. And one kind of core thing is, uh, of course, cross-chain bridge. Uh, there are two types of them. One is a uh, token bridge that you can bridge the assets like from uh, other net to Filecoin or from Filecoin to other nets, uh, uh, like Ethereum, for example. And then the other 
kind of bridges messaging bridge that you can securely send information from other chains to this chain. And my my work is basically trying to figure out what are the use cases native native to Filecoin uh, that could leverage these bridges. And uh, there's a short spec that I wrote, but in short, in summary, I talked to like the storage providers, uh, dot, dot storage services, as well as PL network uh, network partners. Uh, what I found was that uh, for one, basically. Uh, Right now, people cannot do much. Storage provider have a lot of Filecoin. They cannot do much uh, like productive thing with Filecoin. So there's a big interest of building the DeFi ecosystem on top of that, so that they can one, it can solve their collateral problem. So right now, you need to provide a lot of collaterals, and you have to like say buy it from open market and things like that. But with DeFi ecosystem, they can they can participate in lending protocol to uh, borrow those Filecoin, and they can use that for uh, for the uh, collateral uh, when they do the deals, and then. The other one is lending out those file coins that they get uh, to make yields and, uh, and also bridging, bridging the assets to other, in, uh, like say Ethereum, so that they can participate in those uh, DeFi ecosystem without going to the central, centralized exchange to swap these tokens. And so there's a plenty of interest on this side, on the token bridge side for storage from storage provider and investors as well. And then on the messaging side, it's relatively new because it will be very uh, specific to Filecoin's uh, deal making. Uh, so I talked to dot storage, and so what something interesting is that what we could do is uh, we can on Ethereum chain, for example, that's where like most of the NFT contract runs. We can do a remote control. Basically, you can send those uh, deal information uh, from Ethereum Ethereum mainnet uh, to Filecoin net, and then uh, without having those uh, say uh, clients uh, run uh, requiring run them to run S3. And because today, like if you say you have a deal that you want to make. And then you have IPFS uh, kind of uh, uh, pointer object that you want to uh, do a deal. You need to like after that you need to go to S3 and to do that. Kind of they are building their custom bridge that way. So we can kind of uh, automate that so that on the backend side we will automatically handle uh, making the deals with S3 and things like that. And today uh, as NFT like dot storage users they don't need to do that because dot storage team is doing them doing it for them manually. Uh, so that is something that will be interesting to help like dot storage uh, decentralize themselves with uh, the cross chain deal making. And same for S3, like uh, those Web3 clients of S3 that runs on other uh, network could potentially leverage this as well. But the Web2 ones probably don't because they're not on chain anyway. So they're just like upload uh, locally to the S3. And another partner that uh, we met like Polyfilm team is also interested in using this uh, for their service. And then the other use case is like DAO side, which is uh, uh, relatively new. I honestly haven't found like a specific partner that want to, uh, like they're saying they want this solution right now. But I like, think that a uh, similar concept, basically they can uh, say uh, run a DAO, run a treasury that we want to like store this data persistently on Filecoin. And that DAO is mostly on ECM chain these days and they can make a deal remotely uh, to Filecoin. And also uh, on DAOs, they need to make votes, uh, store the voting as well, if they want to have these past information available. So these votes can also be stored uh, remotely. Say we can integrate with Snapshot, and then they can store these votes remotely on Filecoin as well. These are some use case that we come up with, but uh, we haven't really come from customers on these. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, uh, the, 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 the demos, but it's not really demos, just because uh, it's still kind of early stage at the moment.